Now, let me tell you something. You know what a pastor told me? Now, I could tell you stories, but here's what a pastor told me. He said, Bobby, I would be so afraid to just turn loose and let the Holy Spirit have his way in my church. And here's what he said. No telling what would happen. <laughs> I patted him on the shoulder like you would a little kid, kid that had lost his puppy or something. I patted him on the shoulder like this. I said, I can tell you precisely what's going to happen when you just let go and let the Holy Spirit have his way. Jesus Christ is going to be glorified. Because the Holy Spirit is on a mission and a mandate to glorify the Lamb of God. Isn't that amazing? When he, the Spirit of truth, the truth-giving Spirit comes, I'm telling you guys, he, he is on this mandate and mission to glorify the Lamb of God. So I want you to understand, these guys love the Holy Spirit. They're, they're, they're not afraid. Well, you know, no, no. They want to teach you the deep things of God. Deep is doing what? Calling to deep. It's sure not a time to stay shallow. We've got to get as deep into the Word of God. The, the Lord told me in 2019, He said, the, the number one top priority is to get the church on a firm foundation. Come on. If we build on the sand, the winds will come, the rains will blow, the house will fall. But if we build on the rock, on Christ the what? Solid rock I stand. All else is sinking sand. You're very special. Did you know that? You are. I really mean that. You're very special. Okay? Got a big old heart. Yeah. I could tell you a couple. Of, let, can I tell you one of those I can, I can tell what's going to happen to you? A pastor and his little boy. The little boy was about like this then. And the pastor was there. And I, I said to the little boy, Hey, I know what you're going to be when you get big. He said, What's that? I said, You're going to be a professional baseball player. And the little kid just was just elated. And I looked at his dad, and his dad was just cast down like this. And so the little kid runs off, and I, I said to his dad, the pastor, I said, Dave, what is it? He said, oh, Bobby, how could you do that? I said, how could I do what? He said, oh, tell him, you know all little boys want to be professional baseball players. I said, yeah, but he is. And guess what happened? The little kid got good in uh, school, got good in college, got good in this thing, and he got called to be a professional baseball player. His dad calls and says, Bobby, you're not going to believe it. I said, no, David, you're the one who didn't believe it. <laughs> Listen, this is true. But it is something. She's going to be involved in medicine and seeing people get well and healed, and, and she's got a very compassionate heart for her. People, okay? So that would be good. Well, so that would be good. You say, oh, you, no, you watch out. Now, let me tell you something. Somebody is going to find in the stem of an aquatic plant a medicine, a derivative that will make a medicine that will cure Alzheimer's and reverse dementia. It's going to be in the stem of an aquatic plant. Coach, think about it, okay? It will be in the stem of an aquatic plant. That's all I've been told, but they'll, they'll get a derivative out of that, and it will uh, reverse and heal. It will reverse Alzheimer's and dementia. So somebody, we, we just released that. Somebody will get it. Come on. God, God says to tell you, there's, there's anything that's been done once, there is a better way to do it. Right. If you study the Bible, it says, witty inventions, smart plans that work out. Right. God can, God, prophetically, I've given people strategies on how to do things. It's crazy. Yeah, well, but it works. See, I, I one thing, I, I don't know nothing about nothing like that, and God will give me strategies and statistics and words I can't even start to pronounce. But, you know, you understand that, don't you? We, you've seen it happen, haven't you? It's fun. People go, well, you got a word for me. Yeah, I have. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's what we got to do. One time the Lord said, don't let the, don't, don't let the people use your gift to feed their labor. Because, see, God wants you to study, you to apply the Word to your life. Number one question I get asked around the world is, how did you memorize the Bible? How to memorize it, Carolyn? I studied it till all of my fingers would wear the print off the page. Right. Where holes in the Bible. Isn't that something? And I'm telling you, you can't memorize too much of it. 
Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Spend time with the word. I'm telling you, the word is not print on parchment. The word's a person. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Wow. Why is it so important? The Bible says truth is falling in the street. We've got to rescue truth so truth can rescue us. John 17, 17 says, sanctify them through the truth. Thy word is truth. The word sanctify is clean up, set apart for the service of God. So we got to have truth back in the house of God, haven't we? Come on. We got to have it back in our nation. Truth is fallen in the street. That's what it says in the Bible. You say, what do you mean? Well, I think truth is falling in the street when even pastors say, it's okay for a man to marry a man. It ain't okay. It's, it, but God says it's abomination. Well, see, you say, well, now, Bobby, I mean, I, if I talk like that, they might take away my 50607 or whatever <laughs> it is. Who gives a rip? We're going we're gonna to stand before God one day. He said, if I tell you to warn the wicked man of his wicked way and you don't do it and he dies in his sin, his blood will I require at your hands. That's what the Bible said. You say, well, now, you know, no, I want us to stand for truth. If we'll stand for truth, truth will stand for us. I want you to enjoy Jesus, honestly. Psalm 16, 11 says, in, in his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Happiest people I know are those that are sold out to Jesus. So just the best way you know how today. Just say, Lord, created me a clean heart, renewed me a right spirit. I don't want anything in, in my life that would separate me and you. Psalm, 16, uh, Psalm 66, 18 says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord won't hear me. Wow. I don't want to do that, do you? Psalm 66, 18. Wow. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord won't hear me. Wow. So I looked at the word regard. It's the same word that the woman's body does to a fetus. Yeah. It nurtures. Yeah gestates, protects. If I'm doing that with the sin, cuts off my communication channel with God. So let's don't do that. Mm. All right. Well, we're going to mess around for a minute. <laughs> and, yeah, but let, let me tell you something. God will speak to you. John 10, 3 says, my sheep hear my voice. Yeah. John 10, 27 said, they flee other voices. They'll follow the Lord's voice. And, and ask him to speak to you. One of the things I've been noticing, uh, Randy, is God will always start with a token before he releases the treasure. That's right. He'll start with some little in, insignificant thing, something that doesn't look like, who's going to turn aside and look at that? Moses, uh, he saw a bush burning. Wow, good. I've never seen that before in my life. The bush is burning, but it's not being consumed. That was a token. What did he get? He got the treasure leading the children of Israel out. John the Revelator on the Isle of Patmos heard a voice. Token turned and got the treasure of writing the book of Revelation. God will start with a little bitty minute thing. Yes. If we're faithful over that, he'll give us rulership over more. Right. Be faithful, okay? Be steadfast, unmovable. I want that, don't you? I don't want to be broke. Our job is to train them up so they won't be like tossed to and fro. Like right, and so God wants us to work ourselves out of a job. You know, you know what I mean? Train you to do the work of ministry. Good 